I'm here at the world's first international conference dedicated exclusively to sanitation and hygiene. More than 450 participants from 70 countries around the world have been talking about toilets and hand washing this week here in Mumbai. I'm joined by Barbara Evans, the Chief Rapporteur for the Global Forum on Sanitation and Hygiene. Barbara, could you please tell us about the problems people face worldwide regarding sanitation and hygiene? Yeah, I mean, the, the main problem for a very large number of people is just not having a safe place to go to the toilet. So 2.6 billion people in the world have, don't have a clean, safe toilet to use, and of those, 1 billion don't have any toilet at all. So that means when you get up in the morning, rather than just stumbling to the loo, you know, in your ensuite bathroom or at the top of your staircase, these are people who have to go quite often quite a long way to find a private place just to squat down and go to the toilet. Um, sometimes it's almost impossible to find a private place, so many people are forced to go on railway embankments, in riverbeds, just in the street, in the fields, and that's really the problem that we're trying to tackle. And 2.6 billion people, that's basically one in three, so it's a very, very significant problem. And what themes have emerged from the conference this week? A lot of very exciting themes. Um, I mean, the thing about this problem is it's huge, it's intractable, it's difficult because it's about giving people facilities and it's about changing behaviours. And those are two very challenging things and they're not the same. So I think lots of people talked about the scale of the problem, but we also had a lot of quite inspirational thinking about how to solve the problem. Um, a lot of solutions coming right from practical grassroots experience. Um, but also overlaid with some great technical innovations and, and the idea that you need sort of modern science coupled with, with local knowledge uh, in order to solve a lot of these problems, especially in order to find appropriate ways of changing people's behaviour in all sorts of different contexts. So that sort of idea of blending sources of information and knowledge was a big thing. Um, the fact that these 2.6 billion people, and particularly the 1 billion open deaf kids, are actually the, the most vulnerable people in the world. So the idea that if we, ad if, we address, um, if we address sanitation and really seek to reach those people, we're doing something which really speaks to people's basic human rights. It's about equity, it's about fairness. Um, and an idea which sort of is implicit in what everybody says is if you solve this problem, you're essentially solving the biggest um, development challenge of our time, really, and, and you really are delivering a fair, humane lifestyle to the people who really have the least power to demand it at the moment. And we've heard a lot this week about dignity, uh, the economics, the health impact of good sanitation. What has struck you as being the most inspirational presentation here at the event run by the Water Supply and Sanitation Collaborative Council? Um, I'm going to pick two because I always take advantage of, of this opportunity. Uh, one's very inspirational. I, I, I really enjoyed um, a presentation made by Hilda Grace uh, where she talked about the power of educating people who are you know, far away from Mumbai, far away out in the rural districts of India, basically letting them into the secret that they have a constitutional right to some of these basic services. And once you do that, really, that enables them to sort of unleash their own um, energy and power to go and demand that right. And a lot of these problems are not actually that technically difficult to solve, provided somebody wants to solve them. So I love that idea of sort of information unleashing people's power. The other one, which I really liked, or is an example, um, is that just to go back to this point I made before about sort of science and technical knowledge playing a role, um, one of our colleagues made a great presentation and he's working with cities in this state, Maharashtra and Gujarat, and he showed us a whole series of maps, which are maps of cities showing where slums are, where poor people are, and where infrastructure is. Um, I mean, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by training, and for me, the power of showing a city administrator, look, you have all these poor people, this is where they are, and this is where you really need to be delivering your infrastructure in order for these very marginalized poor communities in the urban slums to get services. So I liked that one just because it was a sort of, a sort of wow moment in terms of here's a picture of the people that need your services. Um, so those two, very different, but a, a nice combination showing the sort of different types of things that we need to do in order to solve this problem. And what happens next? How will the conference be followed up? I think a lot of it is about people going back and just getting on with their work. I mean, some of this, you know, this is hard work. A lot of people have been at it for, you know, 20 years, 40 years. We have colleagues here in their 70s. And part of it is just reaffirming that we're doing good work, um, that, that people appreciate what's being done. 
I think a lot of people will have made connections, they will have learned things, they will have met people who can help them in their work, this idea of knitting together different experience and different types of knowledge. So individually people will have learned a lot. I think institutionally that will have an effect. Lots of these people will go back to their home institutions and hopefully convey some of the excitement that's here, some of these networking ideas, some of these connections. So big organizations like uh, UNICEF, um, some colleagues were here from World Vision, you know, the entire way they do programming could ultimately be affected by some of the, some of the ideas which have been cooked up really here in Mumbai. So I think it's, it's not so much a conference for big declarations or, you know, sort of, inter that's not what it's about. It's about people who are working at this business being able to do that better and also just being energized and going back home and, and doing more of it and not feeling like it's just really hard work. Barbara Evans, thank you very much.